Hello and welcome to Expert Day for December 2020. My name is Jason Black. I'm in the ArcSight Intelligence SME, and this is an update on ArcSight Intelligence 6.2. ArcSight Intelligence, formerly known as Interset, fits within the SRG or Security Risk and Governance stack here at Microfocus. For those unfamiliar with it, ArcSight Intelligence, formerly Interset, leverages unsupervised machine learning to take the same security data that's available in ESM and provide a different view, a different lens to create a unique normal for every entity or user or machine within the enterprise. This surface is unknown behavior. While rules and thresholds are perfect for looking for the knowns, you can't write a rule for an unknown. And that's where ArcSight Intelligence really comes into play. So let's take a look at what's new in ArcSight Intelligence version 6.2. So as we continue to invest in the platform, we're making things like SaaS available for customers. This allows advanced analytics to all customers, not just those that have a big data lake. We're also making the platform more extensible, not only with our own tools, but the tools that you currently have that are non micro -focus. We're also continuing our investment to drive efficiency in operations, reducing dwell time, and increase SOC efficiency. And of course, expanding our use cases. And those use cases and our models all map to the MITRE ATT&CK framework, help our customers understand the value of the platform. So this really marks our first foray into ArcSight's SaaS offering for service delivery market. The ArcSight Intelligence SaaS offering removes the barriers to entry, eliminates the, all the heavy lifting requirements from the customer, so it's truly a SaaS delivery mo model. This is much like our existing SaaS off offering for CrowdStrike customers. Whereas CrowdStrike Falcon data goes into the cloud and we analyze it in the cloud and provide uh, a UI back to the customer. We're also extending our existing threat hunting service that is for CrowdStrike customers to all of our customers with this SaaS offering. We have a team of threat hunters that can go through this data and alert you for anything that you need to know about. And you'll see continued integrations with additional SaaS offerings such as Recon coming up here in a few months. We've also integrated tighter into ESM. This allows for less of a learning curve for more tools and more panes of glass, and it gives a unified risk entity in ESM based on ArcSight Intelligence analytics findings. And again, the threat hunting service is now available for customers leveraging ArcSight Intelligence. Our team of threat hunters will go through the analytics findings on a daily basis, reach out to the customers when there's an issue, and walk through those investigations with them. They'll also provide a weekly report and provide some recommended actions for remediation. So now let's take a look at that beautiful new UI. And so now that I've logged into the platform, I notice immediately that the Interset logo has been replaced with ArcSight Intelligence. Again, tightening the family branding here. This is the main login page. From here, I kind of get a really good idea of what ArcSight Intelligence is all about. It's using that unsupervised machine learning intelligence to distill billions of events into a handful of risky entities. Those entities are types of devices that we're looking at or users are all broken down across here. We can see that there are a couple that are grayed out on the right, and that's because we didn't feed the platform any log sources for those models to fire. By design, we want to provide less alerts with more context. So since we didn't feed the system any, any log sources for that, those models are quiet. I see that I've got all my users, machines, projects, websites, so forth and so on here. And I've got a, a little graph to tell me, of course, things are getting worse and my top five riskiest users. I'm going to go ahead and dive into the users. There are 12,092 users in this platform. They're really all here. That's the beauty of the big data platform. I see that they're all ranked. We stack everything in a zero to 100 risk rating fashion. So I understand that somebody is a 98% risky. I should probably go take a look at that person. When I click on the user, I've simply applied the user tag for that username. We use the concept of tags throughout the platform. Most are system generated, but they can also be manually assigned for investigations, for example. This makes it nice to slice and dice the data. I, I see that I've got a 30 day window. Uh, we keep a 30 day rolling window for our analytics and we see that things kind of started getting sketchy around August 23rd. So I'm just gonna zero in on that time frame. That read through the events down here at the bottom, but I still have about 100 things that I may not care about, they're low level. So let me grab the slider and bring that on up to just the top 11 things that I should care about. And they're all stacked in here. If I wanted to get a little quick report on Josh, I could hit this fly out and I can see um, his average risk time, uh, his average working hours, his average working days, so forth and so on, any tags that are associated with him. And I can even push that off to a report for investigation. But let's take a look and figure out why Josh became risky. 
I see that Josh normally works, say, 8.30 to 5.30, takes a lunch maybe a third of the time, but we just saw him work at 3 in the morning. That in and of itself is not why he's our riskiest user, but it certainly is anomalous. I see that Josh sent off 1.31 gig using POST, just setting the high bar for the entire organization. For example, Josh's normal behavior is mapped here, the expected low and high, and we see other users like him because we do peer clustering, and we have a baseline for those users, and then we have a baseline for the entire organization, and Josh has just shattered that. With each of these little flyouts, we're providing the operator with some kind of context and the ability to even put notes to share with the team or flag those for further investigations or case management. Moving on down the path here, I see that Josh took 60 times in an hour from a data store. Um, he normally does that three to 12 times in an hour. The expected high for other users was four times in an hour, but we see that the highest user here was 668. So if we had created a rule or a threshold and said, let's put it at 668, we'd, meet, we'd miss everything below that. This is obviously a scripted process, but Josh's activity has just set him for just the high bar for, for those takes. Moving on down the path here, we see that 1.31 gig that he sent via post to a weird uh, URL, proxy dash 25. And this is highly anomalous. Again, this is odd for a user to be doing this. At any point, I could go in and see the raw events from the proxy logs to try to figure out heads or tails out of this and validate the tool that, in fact, our excited intelligence is not sending you on a wild goose chase. Uh, moving on down the path, we see another weird working hour. Uh, we see that Josh took 38 times from a network share called client data. He normally does that one to three times in an hour, but we just saw him do it 38 times. The expected high is four times in an hour. So again, this is highly anomalous, should probably take some, uh, some further investigation on Josh. Um, when I look on down here at the bottom, I see that Josh sent off 767 meg in one hour on his very first access to a legit website. So again, this is highly anomalous, very suspicious, uh, throughout any of these, I have the ability to tune these up or down with a little widget there, report on them, again, view the events and push those off to a case management tool or flag them for my teammates. Throughout any of this, I could have orchestrated some kind of response with this. Through our API engine, which is all documented in Swagger, I could have set up a policy that said, hey, if you see Josh's risk score or any user's risk score exceed 80%, for example, Invoke a two-factor read-off, tell EPO to kick it off the network, initiate a sore playbook, fill in the blank. Whatever you want to do with the API, you could certainly do it. If I jump back over to overall risk, again, that's where I could take the same kind of approach and look at other entities by type, in this case, websites. And sure enough, I see that legit website that our friend Josh was using. And in fact, Josh is correlated to that, that risk as well. Um, I've also got the ability, as I said before, to use um, the, the tags, right? So I could say, show me command and control behavior. Um, I'll take that website off. Show me all command and control behavior, right? And then start looking certain asset types, entity types, so forth and so on. So if I get through my 22 risky active entities investigations in the day and I wanna go threat hunt, I can certainly do that through the Explore console. So that's it. Thanks for taking a look at ArcSight Intelligence 6.2 for a very complex platform. It demos very easily, it makes my job nice and easy. But that's what we're all about, is simplifying your life and security operations. So thank you for your time today. If you have any questions, please reach out to your friendly MicroFocus resource. We're here to help.